An adjustable power supply is a vital piece of equipment for your electronics lab. Make or buy? That is the question. Well, building one is cheaper, it is fun and you will learn something on the way. Today I will show you how you can build one yourself using common components. It has 30 volts, 1 amp, with adjustable voltage and adjustable current limit. And you can build it with 19 standard parts. Let's dive right in. We start with the schematic. Here's the schematic. This may look a bit impressive, so let me split it in three function blocks and make it three times easier to understand. This part takes care of the voltage control. This part does the current control, and here we have an auxiliary 12 volt supply for the panel meter and the op amp that we use. And well, yes, there is a fourth part, which is the LED indicator for the current limit. Let's start with the voltage adjustment part. In this part, the star of the show is the LM317 here. This is a voltage regulator IC of which you can set the output voltage with a resistor divider according to this formula. So, if we use 200 ohms here and 5k here, we can reach 32.5 volts. Nice formula. But how does it work? Well, the LM317 has a simple life. The only thing it wants to have is exactly 1.25 volt between legs 1 and 2. The only thing it can do is change the voltage on leg 2. And to give it power, we feed it voltage at leg 3. So if we have 200 ohms here and 1.25 volt, we have 6.25 milliamps flowing through R1. Now this current cannot flow into pin 1, because that's a sense pin, so it has to go into R2 of 5k. Now with 5k times 6.25 milliamps, we will have 31.25 volts over R2. Now if we add these two voltages together, we have exactly 32.5 volts. So that's correct. Now if you make R2 zero, you will see that you still have 1.25 volts on the output. This is one shortcoming of this IC. You cannot go lower than 1.25 volts. Let's go to the next part, the auxiliary 12 volt supply. So this schematic looks familiar, right? It's the same as the first one. We just use another LM317 to make 12 volt for the op amp, the panel voltmeter and maybe a fan. The only difference are the resistor values R1 and R2. With 270 ohms and 2K2, we get 11.43 volts on the output. So close enough to 12 volts. That was an easy one. Let's go to the final part, the current adjustment. In this part, a LM358 op amp controls the current. To do this, it needs to know the current and the current limit. The current is measured by this shunt resistor of 1 ohm. The current limit is set by this 5k potentiometer. With 51k and 5k, you have a range of 0 to 1 volt here. Let's say you are just a pot meter, so we have 300 millivolts on the minus input here. Now we connect a load of let's say 250 milliamps. If a current of 250 milliamps flows here through R2, we will have 250 millivolts here on the plus input. Then the op amp output will be 0 volts. The transistor is off, so the LM317 just works normally. Now we connect a heavier load of 310 milliamps. Then we will have 310 millivolt on the shunt here, which will go here to the plus input. Now the output of the op amp will become 12 volt. And something interesting happens. You pull down the lag of the LM317 with this transistor. Now the LM317 will think there's a smaller resistor here at VR1 and it will reduce its voltage. At the lower voltage, the current reduces. This continues until the shunt voltage is exactly equal 
to the potentiometer wiper voltage. So now we are in current control mode. The LM358 is now in charge. As soon as the shunt voltage exceeds the voltage on the wiper of the potentiometer, it starts pulling the LM317 leg down to reduce its voltage. Now let's go to the last part, the LED indicator. An LM358 has two op amps, so we got one for free. I use the second one here for an LED indicator. It compares the transistor drive voltage here with the wiper voltage of 0 to 1 volt. So this LED will light up whenever the transistor is on. So the LED will light up when the current limit is active. The LM358 op amp was selected because it allows sensing near ground. It is a cheap op amp, but very good for shunt sensing, so you cannot use any op amp here. You can build the circuit on a prototyping board by following the placement and wiring in this picture. I recommend you build the circuit step by step and check the function for each block. Also use a big heatsink for the main LM317 IC. The other LM317 may only need a small heatsink. Note that the LM317s cannot be placed on one heatsink. The tab is connected to the output, so you will short the 12V output to your lab power supply output. I use an IC socket for the LM358. That's much easier for debugging. I also indicated here how to connect the panel meter. If you use this combined type voltage and current meter, do not connect the thin black wire. Both black wires are connected internally and you do not want to short your own shunt R2. The end result will look like this. I will leave a link in the description with the schematic and the board setup. I built the whole circuit in an aluminum case of 10 by 5 by 12 cm. This case is also the heatsink for the main LM317. You see I flipped it to the bottom and mounted it on the case. To make the square hole for the panel meter, I recommend to buy a hand nibbling tool like this. It nibbles small pieces from plastic or aluminum sheets with its beak. It's very precise, clean and quiet. I actually regret I did not buy one earlier. For the 36 volt, I use an external power supply like this. It is the safest solution and this way you can also keep your lab power supply very compact. So with a handful of components, we built our own lab power supply with current limit. I did not mention that the LM317 has a short circuit protection and a thermal protection, so it's really robust. I hope this video was useful for you. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and leave your experiences and tips in the comments.